let's wrap up this lecture by looking at some examples together. So here's an example of a great use case for a function. Let's say you want to introduce some students. Um, and you just have a list of students with their name and their age. Maybe these aren't really students. Maybe this is some, some group somewhere. Um, uh, the, uh, that kind of routine of introducing someone's name and their age has a few steps in it. We want to put together a string that says how many years old a person is. We want to print out their name and their, their age. Uh, and if you had to do this you know, for each person, for Sonia, for James, for Greg, and Alexandria, you'd have a, kind of a longer, longer code. But here we can define this introduction function. Um, so we define the function named introduction that takes name and age as its parameters. And then in the body of our function, we have two lines. One that creates a new string and another that prints some text to the screen. Notice there's no return, fun uh, no return statement here. Functions do not have to return something every time. It is optional for them to return. Um, and then the, uh, we can then call this function multiple times for different student age uh, or person age combinations. So Sonia here is 41, James is 19, Greg is 28, Alexandra is 76. If we run this code, actually, why don't we just do that here together? When I run this code, and three demo.py. See that for every function call, the body of our function gets executed. And we print out, hi, my name is name. So for the first call, hi, my name is Sonia, plus they are age string. And we build our age string to be the, you know, concatenating the age, the string age and years old. Hi, my name is Sonia, they're 41 years old. Uh, Hi, this is James, they're 19 years old, so on and so forth. And you can see how this is decently more readable. Not only is it just shorter, but it's clearer for us as readers of this code to see what's going on. Okay, so we are introducing Sonia, who is 41. We're introducing James, we're introducing Greg, we're introducing Alexandria. Um, let's try another one here where we actually write some code together. So let's say I was given this prompt. Uh, write a function that takes a string as a parameter and returns the word repeated twice. String as a parameter returns the word repeated twice. Okay, so how do I define my function? How do I write my function? Well, I start with a def keyword, which it stands for define. And then I'm going to, after a space, type the name of my function. So let's say that my function name is double string. And we say here that we want our function to take a string as a parameter. Sometimes you might hear that people might say, take the string as input to the function. So we do that by uh, specifying in the definition that we'll have one input. And we're going to call that input variable um, single stir, followed by a colon. And then these will be all of my indented lines. By the way, we had a uh, last lab, some students asked, hey, what does pass do? Pass is a word, uh, is, a, is a special kind of statement in Python, a special keyword that does absolutely nothing. And so it's here specifically because you'll notice that after every time we have a colon, uh, you have to have something come after a colon. Uh, if I were to run this code, just do, okay. World. So maybe I'm partway through writing my, my function here, um, but I'm not done, so I'm just going to leave it blank and then I'm going to do hello world. If I run this code, Python's going to be very unhappy. So indentation error, expected an indented block. So whenever you have a conditional or a for loop or a while loop um, or a function um, or anything where you the Python is looking for an indented block, you have to have at least one line. And maybe you're not ready yet to have any lines. So you can use pass, which when this line is reached, it does absolutely nothing. It's just a placeholder. So whenever you see that in your code, um, it's probably just a placeholder. And so you can delete it and replace it with your own code, oftentimes. So double string. It'll take in this single stir. 
So that this will be the name of the variable that we can use inside of the body of our function. And then um, the instructions say we want to return the word repeated twice. So notice it's not saying we want to print it out to the screen. We're just going to return it um, and let whoever called this function use that return value however they think is best. So, okay, how do I double a string? Well, um, doubled stir, we'll say, is maybe single stir plus single stir. By the way, can, maybe you can think of a better way to, to do this. If you remember, we could also do something like this. Double stir equals single stir times two. That works too. So multiplying strings just is repeated addition of strings. But this is fine. We'll just add the same string together twice. And then how do we return this back to the user? Well, we type a special keyword return, and then what we want to return, we're going to reference this variable that we created, doubled stir, to return it to whoever called us. So now let's say that our um, the string that we want to do use is, well, why don't we take it from the user? So given stir equals input to string, take a string, and then why don't we print out that twice is double string given stir. So I want you to pay attention to what's going on here in my code. Notice how, uh, so we've written a function, double string. Um, let's really think about this carefully of what the computer is doing when it goes through this code. Uh, executing lines three to five, remember Python goes through and executes line by line, this is a function definition. So this is Python learning and storing in its memory. Um, and actually, we'll talk next time about scope and about uh, we'll get back to frames. Those will make an appearance. So somewhere in its memory, somewhere in the frame, it's storing that this double string function takes one parameter, one argument, well, takes in one argument. So in the definition, there's one parameter. And then uh, this is what it does with those parameters. So it'll run these lines of code. It doesn't actually execute them yet because it's part of a define def uh, block. It just creates the function or defines the function that we can now use. So now we get down to line seven and line seven here will take input from a user and we're familiar with that. And so this is the input function that you now can understand gets evaluated. Um, and when this function gets executed or evaluated, it returns a string that the user types in and stores it in the given stir variable. And finally, we can now reference that variable, but we want to double that string. And so what we have here is we have a print function. Um, just for simplicity, I'll use this plus here. We have a print function that takes one uh, argument here, which is a string. But notice this is an expression. So expression with a plus operator and two operands. On the left, we have a, a string literal that twice is. And on the right, our other operand is actually a function call, which is another expression. Remember, just uh, these function calls are expressions. And so Python will first evaluate that expression. And then as soon as those, you know, both sides of the plus are as simplified as possible, as soon as they become actual string literals, uh, we'll be able to add them together. And so double string gets called. We pass in given stir, which is whatever the user typed in. And that will go and execute the lines of code in our body using the variable uh, value that's passed in. So given stir is passed in and gets assigned to single stir. And now we can use that value inside of our body. So let's, let's run our code and just see what happens here. Python 3 demo.py string. Uh, let's say just hello. Okay, well, that twice is hello, hello. Uh, so we do single stir plus single stir, hello, hello. Okay, so this gets returned, and then it gets, you know, this expression gets evaluated to the return value, which is the doubled stir, and that gets concatenated to that twice is, and then the print function prints that string, that twice is, hello, hello, to the screen. 
To wrap up here on our last slide, just a summary of what we learned today. So we learned today uh, to think of functions as a subroutine that specify some series of steps, things to do. As soon as you see yourself doing the same sort of thing in different places, uh, think function. Think this is something that I should encapsulate and then refer to. Um, and using this encapsulation, you can make your code uh, shorter, but also more readable. The vocab from today is also pretty important because these are some of the most common words you'll hear thrown around um, in computer science and uh, that you'll use when talking about problems that you're working on. So I'm just going to use them here one more time, and I've been trying to use them very clearly during today's lecture. But using a function is called calling or executing that function. So using a function is called calling or executing the function. The function call is an expression, which is a word we know already, that needs to be evaluated. And the input values that you give in the function call when you call the function are called arguments. Now, when we want to create a new function, that is called defining a function. And there, in the definition, whatever values you want to take in, the variables that we use to hold those values that are passed in are called parameters. And in the body of the function, we can use those parameters um, or not if we don't want to, but we do have some sort of statements in the body. And then optionally, we can return a value. And the return value is what the function call will uh, evaluate to when it gets actually called or executed. On, uh, on that note, we're going to stop. And I will see you all Wednesday for your exam. Monday after the exam, we're going to continue on with functions further. See you.